So my training is now re being recorded. What I'm showing you here is the training handout that is provided to you. In this training handout, we will provide you some information about what we do here. As a training service provider, we also give you a lot of training material. This training material is provided to you in a training DVD. If you have not already received it, please make sure that you receive it. The training DVD is a lot of content that is relevant for you to improve your career path into quality service. So, read as much as you can. We have a lot of training manuals. We have a lot of training books that are available in that. And I keep referring to those during the program very often. So, I will just walk you through with the training program that we have which is supported by that training DVD. So if you look at the training DVD content, <laughs> so here are the details of content that is existing in the training DVD that you would be getting. It includes information about 21 CFR Part 11. Anyone aware of what is 21 CFR Part 11? That's something to do with quality assurance and pharmaceutical industry. Pharmaceutical industry is very sensitive to quality, right? Not only do they have quality control on the manufacturing process, but also there is quality control on the system that they use for processing. So if you were to participate in pharmaceutical industry, how would you go about doing your role as a participant for improving or working on their system? Not the process, but, not the system. but this is the system side of it. So this gives you guidelines on that. Then we have a previous aggregation of batch 55 recordings available for you. We are not giving you the latest recordings for a specific reason because when we started sharing the latest recordings for the session, they were being misused. I was started a parallel training center by using these recordings. Do you believe that? Yes, it happened. That's not where, this is intellectual property, right? So this should not be misused. So that's why we stopped giving you, but we always share what you have for your training program that is available to you. Going on to the next folder, which is talking about CMM. CMM is Capability Maturity Model, which is for improving the standard that you follow in your system development life cycle. Have you heard about ISO 9000? Anyone? Online members, have you heard about ISO 9000? standard that ISO 9000 is the de facto standard guideline that is adapted because when you follow the guidelines of standardized processes, you are assured of the quality of your results. Why do the American organizations follow ASA or ISO for manufacturing process or GMP in pharmaceutical industry? Right? There are standard guidelines because if you follow those standard guidelines, the output is controlled and the end result is as expected. So when I go to a prospective client that I want to build software for you, let's say I walk into the office for a big pharmaceutical company and I am willing to automate everything for you. I can build a system that will help you streamline your processing. What is the confidence that this, this organization has in me? They will look at my background. They will look at what projects I have managed and what certifications do I have to offer. So in that, if I have ISO 9000 certifications that are relevant to IT, I also have CMM certifications. So they will then understand that I, as an organization, is following some standard in my processes where I will have proper documentation available at each step of the way. And being a BA, I think you will understand, Ravina, what is the importance of documentation, right? So there is a standardization on documentation. There is a standardization on sign-offs. So everything is defined in that process. 
So if I am a CMM level certified company, it ranges from 1 to 5. If I am CMM level 5, I am expected to be top of the line in following processes. So now, if I follow the process, then the level of confidence that the organization has to be a partner with me increases. So this has some information about CMM. And there are a lot of documents that we have which are for information on, let's take a dive here. These documents are for you to use in your plan, some support document that will be needed. Going back to the folder once again, <coughs> then you have a knowledge base. Now this knowledge base is a repository which contains a lot of concepts. What is client server? What is C programming? What are flowcharts? What are uh, CCPIP operating systems? How do I do testing? What are databases? and a lot of other information is available here. So this repository that we are sharing with you is a collection of content that we have found helpful over the years. Everything is available on the internet as well. Don't get me wrong. This is not the only source that you have. Internet, internet is now fully enabled to provide you whatever you want for anything in life. So you can always do that as well. But when you are in a ocean to find the fish that you need, it's kind of different. So this is the repository that where we have created a shallow pond for you which has all the fish that you want. So go to the ocean when you're ready. Nobody's stopping you. If you know the fish that you want is available in the ocean, go pick it up. Nobody stops you. But to improve your learning and shorten the path to reach the right fish, we have this pond for you. So this is the repository that you should, I encourage you to use as much as you can. <coughs> Coming back to the handout. Now here is some logistical information that we need to be aware of. Every unit when you are in the class is allocated a user ID and password. So the host that you are sitting on, you could be sitting on any host, has a number associated with it on the top right corner. So let's say you're sitting on machine number one, the access user credential will be switched to one and all passwords are welcome. For the remote students it's slightly different, so you will be accessing a remote desktop. After you get into the remote desktop, you will get a password and an ID, which is just share 20 and welcome to access the machine. Did anyone have any issues in accessing the machine? Online team members, any questions? Anyone, any response on this please? Is everyone able to access their machine? Yeah, okay so far. Okay, that's good. Good to hear that. If you do not tell me what's going on, I assume everything is fine. So remember that, okay? Alright? <clears throat> Next thing that we want to do is, we are going to introduce you to a new concept of network attached storage. When you store information on your computer, what do you do? You go save a file on a folder in your system. Right? When you want to save a resume, what do you do? In Word, you just go save file, save as, or file save, and you're done. But now I'm going to introduce you to a new concept of network attached storage. Before we go on to the network attached storage, let's take a short break so that we can charge ourselves and come back again.